According to the U.S. Census Bureau, there are about 12 million single-parent families, and more than 80 percent of them are headed by moms, more than three times the number in 1960. And as the ranks of single mothers grow, the face of single motherhood is changing. More older, educated, professional women are choosing to have children on their own, and they are organizing like never before. Joining us now is Marika Lindholm, founder of Esme, and Kara Lemieux, single mom and creator of Here We Are. Are today. Welcome, ladies. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Kara, you recently did a TED Talk on rebranding the single mom. What do you think are some of the biggest fallacies out there? Um, it was a TEDx talk, so I want to clarify. Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think one of the biggest fallacies is that we're all struggling um, and are sort of, sort of worthy of pity. Mm -hmm. um, and I know when I became a single mom, it was complete surprise. Um, and I had to do a lot to break myself um, mentally of that stereotype so that I could, you know, live the best life for myself and my daughter. Absolutely. And, and Rika, you found, founded Esme, Empowering Single Moms Everywhere, with this goal in mind, correct? Right. At Esme.com, we try to inspire and honor single moms, all the hard work that they do. And I totally agree, the stereotype of sort of this mom that's uh, feeling sorry for herself simply is not true. We have lots of moms who don't even think they need our site because <laughs> they say, we can do it all. Right. So so we, yeah. There are plenty more educated single moms who are making this decision as a choice. They're not falling into it. But then does it create a sort of a, a, a class divide? I was doing some research and I found a site called WealthySingleMommy.com and it made me think, well, you know, is there a sisterhood of single moms or is there a severe class divide between the professional single moms and those who are struggling? I mean, I can speak from personal experience. I know that I, I feel very fortunate that when I became a single mom, I was educated. I, I had already achieved my education. I was a professional. Um, and I still felt a lot of the struggles that I didn't anticipate with juggling the, you know, the work-life balance and all those things. Um, I do think that there's a lot of single moms in this country that are doing a lot with very, very little, mm -hmm. and we can do a lot more to support them. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know if I'd, I, don't, I don't know if I can speak to whether or not there's a class divide just because right. of my mm -hmm. personal experience. Right. I'm a sociologist, so class divides are what we study. Great. <laughs> but, um, you know, the average single mom does make about twenty-six thousand dollars a year, so it's a big difference than the solo mom by choice who's had a professional career and then she decides she wants a child. However, as you point out, a lot of the issues are the same. You're worried about childcare. You're worried you have mom guilt. You're worried about just the logistics. And at at Esme, we try to you know bridge these differences. We try to bridge the different circumstances that women have. Some women are solo because their partner's deployed. Their partner's incarcerated. But they can still have experience that is valuable to someone who might be in upper economic bracket. I so. might argue that some of the issues you ladies are pointing out are issues that affect working parents everywhere, right. male and female, <laughs> right? Some of these things like child care. I mean, what would you say are the most pressing issues and policies that single moms are facing today? I mean, for me personally, it was affordable child care. Um, when my daughter was a newborn and I was going to work at 5 o'clock in the morning, I mean, I was spending an exorbitant amount just to be able to work. Um, and, you know, even now with the school calendar, I was saying before we went on that there's a delay this morning and trying to figure out, you know, who's going to watch my daughter while I get on the train to come into the city. Early dismissal, the bane yeah. of working mothers exactly. everywhere. Exactly. I mean, exactly. I came up with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those, those are my two big pain points. Right. What about right. which? I would add health care. I mean, there's now, a, you know, the discussion around Obamacare and whether there's a lot of fear on, on the women who use our site. I would add discussions around minimum wage, you know, the, how much you know, earning power women have. So, I And think tell us about the organization that's going on right now. It's very heartening to see, you know, your site, your site, other sites out there. Do you feel that there is more of a strength in numbers these days? Absolutely. Among single moms? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think among anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the moment you sort of say something out loud and you realize there's a shared experience, there's definitely strength in that, you know, emotional. And then you share details that help you figure out the logistical side of right. things, too. But also in the ability to shape policy, do you feel like there's strength there? 
I think we're getting there. I don't think mm -hmm. we're quite there yet, but I mean that that would be a dream of mine is right. to and that's why I try to bridge so many different types of single moms. Right. And um, I know like we started Facebook groups and they were filling up so quickly, you know, yeah. so there's all kinds of different communities. Would you yeah. each mind quickly sharing your personal stories? Is that okay with, Fine, with single yeah. motherhood? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm an open book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so I, I was a producer in network television news, um, going to work at three o'clock in the morning and um, two days before my 30th birthday, I found out I was pregnant. And it was definitely not something I'd planned. And I have made a number of changes in my life to be able to continue my career and also be the kind of mom that I want to be. Would you say those career changes were driven by the need to control your schedule a little bit more? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I hate to admit it. It like breaks my heart that I can't be split myself in two, but absolutely. The fact that I work from home and have flexibility and an unbelievable, you know, co-workers and people that I work for mm -hmm. definitely has contributed to my success. Great journey. And Marika, what about you? Well, about 15 years ago, I got divorced and um, I had been working as an adjunct at Northwestern University and adjuncts don't necessarily make as much as the full professors, but I had followed my spouse there, another academic, and suddenly I was thrust into this uh, situation where I had to teach three, four more classes to keep up economically, have my own place. And so at the time, I also ended up getting pretty sick. And so I really felt the vulnerability that single moms face. And, and you had one child or I had two. two children? Yeah, okay, great. yeah, they were three and five. So by experience, so. you're both here and, and yeah. helping spread the word. Single moms are growing and they're yeah. getting organized, which is great. Great to see. Kara and Marika, thank you so much for being with us. Thank, thank you. you.